Kevin, what are people's biggest fears, do you think, when they start out with counselling? I think one of the big fears is that they're going to come to, to counselling and something's going to happen to them. You know, the counsellor's going to do something to them. Mm. And it's not, it's, it's very much about, it's called the talking cure. It's about sitting and talking. And sometimes just being in silence together. And then maybe exploring what the silence was like. You know, just that being alongside each other is really important. I think another fear that, that clients can have when they come to counselling if it's the first time, they might fear, and I, I do get asked, you know, you know, do you think I'm mad? Mm. They, there might be a fear that I'm going to diagnose them. And of course, diagnosis really is about treatment. It's very much based within the medical model. Mm. For me, as a psychotherapist, I don't see myself as being part of the medical model. I'm, I'm really just interested in you as a person. I'm interested in exploring what your world is, how you experience your world. And so there's something about, you know, don't, please don't be afraid that you're going to be given a label and be diagnosed and told you've got this wrong with you or that wrong with you. It's actually just, well, tell me about what, what you experience. Mm. And if it's a difficulty, how might you work with that difficulty? How might you change that? How might you dialogue with it to try mm. and find ways to make it less of a burden? And for a time, of course, therapy is about you share your burden with the therapist. And sometimes people think, um, you can read my mind, don't they? Or, you know, you're looking at my body language and, and that's telling you... And I suppose a person can feel quite, um, quite vulnerable mm. then. What would you say to somebody feeling like that? What I tend to say is, I can't read body language. You know, we, there's many books that you can read that will tell you what every gesture means. <laughs> I don't hold any store by those at all. Mm. Because I can't. You know, I cannot know what you're feeling and what you're thinking. I'm a human being, mm. just like you. There is, no, there is no way in which I can read your mind. There is no way in which anyone can read your mind. It's very important to, to actually, for, for me to hear what your experience is. You know, and, mm. and not, be, not be afraid that I can see something that you're not aware of. Because there is, you know, I, I can only be aware of what you tell me. Because if I, if I, if I think I know, I actually lose sight of you and I lose contact with you because I think I know better. I, I, I know best what you're feeling and thinking and that you, you might be saying one thing but your body's saying another. If I feel that, I'll ask if, if that makes sense to you. Does it feel like, mm. you know, there's something happening that, that doesn't feel quite right? But I can be wrong. And that's important, it's checking things out rather than saying, oh, you've just crossed your arms, that means you're angry. It's a rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> and this is important, you know, yes. nobody can make a definitive statement about what you're feeling. Because the minute they, they say you are feeling this or you're feeling that because you've done this or you've done that, is the minute they stop listening to you. Mm.